right, folks, we are inside the 2014 Chevrolet. It's the Traverse. It's got the big 3.6 in it. It's got the chubby rubber. The leather. The hole in the roof. And apparently, a whole bunch of lights on and it won't move, she said. Well, this lady, uh texted me a picture of her dashboard yesterday. It had an ABS traction, this, that, and the other thing on. And said she can't get it to go over 40 MPHs. And I asked her if it acted like the traction control was kicking on and she agreed that it did. And there we go. Service stability track, service traction control, ABS. So we're going to let it get hooked up to the uh, Alltel here. I assume it has a magnet that has come apart on a wheel bearing. And it's, uh, make sure everything turned off here. And that's what's giving her fit. So that's what we're going to find out, you and I, as soon as we get this all logged in. We'll take her for a little shake and just see if it needs a wheel bearing. Let's see if we got our serviceability track, traction control off. Uh, I think, you know, once we start our ABS light will be on. Battery low. Just about done scanning for us here. So there's all of our lights. Oh, got a heck of a glare here outside in the sunshine. We'll go to our report and we'll see if it uh, just tells us which wheel we're going to be looking at. Right rear plausibility. So we're going to go right into the brake control module. And I'm going to get some data and we're going to take it for a shakedown and see if the right rear is being erratic. And if it is, we'll put it on the lift and a lot of times more often than not, you can find these just with visual inspection, so we might not even have to get fancy. So we're going to look at the right rear. Actually, we'll just look at all of them. Because I think we can do a graph merge. There we go. So now we have all of them up on the screen. We'll slow that down a little bit. We'll full screen that baby. I know you got the glare. It's terrible. But let me uh, get us moved here. We'll see if it starts acting up on us. You would think with it being disabled that it wouldn't be kicking on here but oh traction control on look it fixed itself but look down here and it's still broken so whatever one is our light green trace is going super erratic and that is the right rear wheel I think it says yeah right rear wheel yeah that one's going crazy all wheel drive off it says it's not throwing ABS lights because this thing's going oh I was gonna <laughs> spoke too soon there mr. O so there we go now it's going cray cray on us but all right well we at least know we can tell by looking at this that like I say the light green trace there is obviously crazy it probably is just a broken magnet Would we say the right rear? Can we see him? Oh yes, sir. Uh, I can see. Let's see. I'm gonna shine in there. Enhance. Enhance. Let's see if I can hold you guys still. So you see the bolt on the bottom of the screen there, right above it, that magnetic strip. So it's shiny, shiny, shiny. Real shiny. Where's the magnet? <laughs> I think there's only one small piece left. And it's right there, so it's starting. So there's the magnet. Magnet, magnet. And then back to shiny right by the bolt head. So the magnet, <clears throat> so watch that bolt head there. That little magnet strip line goes from there to there. And then the rest of it's all broke off and shiny. So it must have just uh, fallen off on her. And uh, it's not too big a deal. Usually when one of them goes on these shivvies, all the other wheel bearings are right behind it, because if I remember correctly, these take the same wheel bearing front and rear. So you can see on this one, right there, uh, let's see, I'll find the speed sensor here for you. Enhance, enhance. So there's the tip of the speed sensor comes in and the magnetic wheel 
on the back of the wheel bearing is the trigger wheel. Active type wheel speed sensor, so super duper common on these. So let's get a wheel bearing coming. Get after it. Should have all the tools we need now, I think. Except the hammer. Uh, 34 mil on that little guy. I'm gonna take the little torx bit out here. That's probably a 15 or so. Was that not a 15 or so? Probably a 30 or so. Looks a little buggered up there. Let's see if it wants to play nice. And it does. So we'll leave that right in the socket for the time being. Let's see if we can take a little tension off our caliper here. We'll pull it off with the whole bracket and everything. So that's all wiggly. And I think that's the 21 back here. Yes, sir. Not a lot of room though. Doody do. Yeah. Ratchet's going the wrong way, of course. That one's loose. Well, I gotta get the top caliper bracket bolt here. Oh, come on, freaking! Oh, that didn't help. Oh, that must have been like 7,000 foot pounds of torque. That one's loose. Getting the old scream of Probably the most iconic sound in a repair shop. So there's that, our caliper's off. We're letting her hang by the hose, of course. You guys can't see crap anyways. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a fail! I need a hook for the hook. There. Make all the internet worry warts feel better even though it's still hanging by the hose. Because some people get awfully worried about things. It's not really dangling by the hose, folks, let's be honest. There's that. Wow. She must be, must be she had a fresh brake job because things are too loose. Shoes are good. They look like they've been replaced. Typically I need little chivvies. You uh, take the rotor off and the brake shoes fall off. So these must have been recently done. We're gonna have to see if we can't beat the axle loose. We wanna make sure that's loose before we get too far, and then we're gonna go back on the backside. I didn't get any sockets for that. I don't know what size they are. Let me feel them. They feel like 18s. They're not 21, so that's what they must be. Let's get this moving first. Oh, Brooks. Brooks USA. The winch. Don't move. She moves now, baby. Looks like there are three bolts. Back here. They are the 18 mil. There's one we got cracked loose. I don't think you guys will be able to see the other one, but it's just like this one, just in a different spot. And they're kind of tricky. They're not tricky to get to, they're just tricky to record. So you have to use your imagination you have to go to your imagination station for a minute and kind of envision me getting after a couple bolts here. I'll show you. Head on, this one's kind of boogered up. Something whacked it. No app to it, but whatever. Last but 
but not least you got this fella here. I don't know if the air ratchet is the most iconic sound. Maybe it used to be, now it's just batteries. Everybody's got battery. Everything's battery powered. I'm an old school air tool guy myself. I do have battery powered tools, but uh, in in my shop, they just they just don't hold up as long. They're great, they're powerful, they're sometimes more powerful than the air, but they do not like falling off the tool cart. <laughs> so I've broke a lot of the tools just because they're plastic. And you know, they get used on a daily use in a real shop, they get used and abused quite a bit and dropped and knocked over and um, you know, fall off shelves and stuff. And they take quite a bit, I'll be honest. I mean, you can drop them a whole lot of times before they finally say, no sir, I'm done. I gotta put this back in a little bit, I'm stuck. Mr. O's stuck in a hole. Let's see if we can't uh, do something like that, there we go. And then I found that the air tools, they just last long. I've had this little ratchet, I can't even tell you how long, a lot of years. 21 millimeter will not fit an 18. Still, no matter how hard you try. But I'm thinking we're gonna cheat a little bit here because I know you will sit back here and beat your living brains out getting these things out. So we're gonna take a chop off a wheel stud. I'm out of cutting this because I got one that's too small and I don't feel like putting in a new one. Ta da! Uh, let's see, we'll pick up our broken piece because we didn't bring over a punch, so we'll use this. There's that, hopefully. I'm hoping and praying that that sucker will come out of there. Ta da! It did. It fell down in there. We're not worried about that yet. It's down in here. Okay, this may or may not work. We're gonna give it the old college try. Technically, we should take the parking brake shoes off, but we're just gonna kind of scooch them over a little. For the time being, we're not gonna worry about our broken piece. But we'll get it. We're gonna use our little Astro tool, last chance hub tool here, slash nut and bolt with a little presser foot on the end of it. Um, we're going to have to take that brake shoe off, which isn't that big a deal, I suppose. At the end of the day, unless your pliers don't line up here, friggin' junk. Yeah, just have to touch them up on the grinder. Must have a little weld slag on them from something. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I see. They don't close all of them. What kind of show is this guy running? Try these ones. So I can get a hold of that spring and draw. Get that one unhitched. Let's get our nail out of here. Goodness gracious, that thing's got a lot of pressure on it. Usually you can just push these in pretty lightly. There we go. I do have a tool for this, but usually these springs are pretty light. So we're gonna take our nail and spring out of the way. Now, we'll get our broken piece out, and now we can get our fingers back in here. We can just leave the top spring on. We don't want to take the extra five seconds to take that off, but we're gonna. Sometimes I make poor decisions, you guys get to see it. We think like, yeah, we'll save time. Not really, just take it off. Get your adjuster, don't let that baby fall on the floor. Take your shoe off. Now, we can do it the right way. There's the other piece for the adjuster. Don't lose anything. Instead of being a ding dong. So we'll stick this in here and then in a perfect world. Oh boy, she's gonna be pushing cockeyed. It's gonna tear off our threads. 
I wonder if we use the smaller bolt. Comes with two bolts. I didn't put any lubrication on it, so that's not good. Let's use the smaller one here. I think we can get down lower in the hole and push a little more evenly. Get this sucker to pop. That's all we need. Just get her to crack loose out of the knuckle here. That might push a little more even. Oh, no, it's not. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be nasty. I'll tell you what. We're sitting here like a bunch of ding-dongs. Tater down here where we have a bigger surface area. Go back to plan A with a bigger bolt. Quit acting like an animal. Now we can stick the little foot on it. Probably should lubricate the threads. But this shouldn't take much. A couple little toots. Because we have a tremendous amount of force now to crack this bearing loose. Now you guys who watch the rain man down in Florida, he takes the bolts out and goes like this, wiggle, wiggle, and the hub falls off. Sometimes he gets some junk down there too. And I just laugh and laugh. Kaboom! Pop goes a weasel, baby. So now that we've got it crack lacking, because like I said, you can sit there and beat the living tar out of these and they don't budge. We want to get the bearing out the rest of the way. It might be loose enough to just tap. you want to be, huh? So we'll flip her over, you guys can't see. Move your hose, keep your tootsies out of the way. <laughs> That's how they do it far. However, you can see the dilemma here. It's just, you know, typical. It's our salt, rust, corrosion, junk. So using that tool allows you to push against something. You know, snap the hub loose. Don't even try just sitting here, you know, beating on it first and this and that. It says last chance, but they should call it first choice. Here they are, folks. Uh, two nuts, two bolts, two different sizes, two little feet to push against. They have a ball bearing in the end of them to guide that foot. Probably should lubricate the threads, let's be honest. Uh, I'm not a good representative of these, uh, but I've used them a lot. It's your classic 78, 834, last chance, forward slash, first choice, impact rated hub bolt removal kit. Simply use these impact rated bolts and nuts and push against the knuckle assembly and force the hub off. Get the job done with Astro Tools for guys who like to get done. Astro. Uh, not a sponsor, but uh, great tool, super duper cheap. Keep them in your toolbox. I have several sets here because you're going to gnar them up eventually because not every one of them you can push straight and uh, we'll just say things happen. And also to answer other questions, you know, some guys will say, what if, you know, why didn't I take off two wheel studs and push evenly and this and that. And then in fantasy land, that works great because you've got two areas that, across from each other that you can push against, it goes and it pops off nice and even. But in the rust belt, we don't care. We just need it to crack loose. You just need it to move, you know, just the scotch, just barely move then you can take it off the rest of the way. So uh, pushing even great, if that's your cup of tea, take two studs out, you know, do it nice and even. We just get after it.
So we'll spritz it down with some of the film. Oh, let's flip the old one over here. We can now clearly see the magnet. It's only from here to here. Most of it's missing. Here's your wheel speed sensor right there, which reads the magnetic tone ring, which on the new bearing from Napper, not a sponsor, is right here, and it's in good shape, so. We will take our freshly Loctited bolts. Try to line up a couple of them, just hold the stuff still for us. Put your parking brake actuators. There's a good time to fix any of your parking brake business if that's all kibosh. We're gonna line her up on the splines of the axle. We're gonna line her up in the hole, then we're gonna line up a couple of these bolts. Get them started. third one started we'll draw her up it should slide in the hole easy so don't draw draw it up like I said to try to force it in there you have to get the corrosion out you should be able to easily push the bearing in uh, which which I just did Now that they're snugged, we lightly have them in there with the air ratchet. I'm going to look up the torque specs, of course, and we're going to go through and tighten them up and torque them completely to factory specs. And then we'll do our axle nut, we'll get our brake shoes back on here. And my guy Josh, he does lots and lots of brake jobs, way more than I do anymore. So we'll put that up there. Get our cup on there. Get this on there. We'll give her a push and a turn. And now she's stuck on there permanently. And then we will find all the adjuster. We're going to have to put a little bit of lube in that because I did get some dirt on it and I wiped off the dirt, which in turn wiped off the lube. I'm just going to stick a little bit of brake caliper grease down inside the hole. Not that anybody ever adjusts these and or uses them it's just we need it for our state inspection so that's the only time we have to fix it for customers is once a year we gotta get their parking brake working thought that spring is a little heavy duty for up top there we go oh as bad as you want to reach in there with your fingers don't do it because she'll get you there she is Stupid design, huh? And I do understand it's kind of clever how they use the spring to hold the hold the adjuster from turning. Like I understand the concept, but you know what I'm saying. There's some diehard Chevy guys out there, and I'm not uh, not partial really to any brand. I on here today, I don't care about cars. Or when I drive, as long as it's not a Dodge or a Chevy or a Ford. And, uh, <laughs> say that out loud. No, honestly, folks, I don't care. We pick on everything. They're all junk when they're broke. That's what I'll tell you. Even Toyotas, even Hondas. When they're broke, they're junk. Inside the rotor is clean on the hack side where it's going to sit up against the hub. So we just want to slip it on. Oh, we will find our little screw here. We'll put a little screwy back in here and then we're going to go through and make sure our adjustment is good on our parking brake shoes. Put the caliper on, put the bolt on, 
or the nut, torque it down. So I'm going to reach in and we're just going to click down on the star wheel. Like I say, try not to go too far because it is kind of a pain in the butt to back it back off if the spring rolls around on you. Way too tight again. How did just flicking it down make it too tight? look like I'm using a lot of effort to turn it because we're turning the wheel on the opposite side through the powertrain you know while it's in neutral the scraping noise you're hearing is fine till it isn't but it's good trust me a little bit of rust inside there one very light ugly duck that's good enough on that oh, and just like that I need a nap We're gonna slide our caliper and bracket back on here. Good time to service the brakes if, uh, if you notice that the pads are seizing in the brackets or anything like that. And we did put a little bit of the Loctite on the bolts here. So we'll get these in. I'm gonna get the factory specs and we'll get these tightened up. And same thing for the axle nut. I'm gonna get the axle nut put on. I think that was 100 and 50 and some change, 151 foot pounds, something like that. So we'll get that torqued down. And then we're going to take it for a shake and see if we fixed it. data back up on the screen here. Let's just see if that wheel's working. Yeah, it is working. So we'll go show selected and then we're gonna do um, graph merge. We'll slow her down a little bit here. Let's go for a rip. We'll probably have to go through and clear the lights too, but at least this way we can tell working and what's not I think we're gonna be in good shape until already just driving through the parking lot here that we have all four speed sensors coming up now now what you guys can see there's gonna be some differential be between them now because I'm going around a circle when we get out here on the flats I can't see crap so I know you guys can't see crap let me get out here where we got no glare. Let's go the other direction. All of our lights turned off on their own, so that's good. Oh, there we go. We got that. We got to we got to go the other way so we can get the sun behind us. Then we can see what we're doing. There we go. Now we can see. Now everybody can see. And everybody's happy, but. Things good. All four wheels going up evenly with each other. No one wanted ABS activation. None of that stuff. All right, so she should be happy. That's it. We're done. Show's over. So we're gonna back out of here. We're back in the shop. I'm gonna let it go through read the codes I do want to clear the codes out of it uh, so nobody sees them in the future and uh, whatever so anyhow codes are clearing codes are now cleared I'm happy you're happy this lady's gonna be happy we can let her know it wasn't major and uh, I think that's it folks so um, 
check out the uh, I'll try to remember to put a link there for that last chance slash first chance hub removal tools slash nut and bolt business there from the Astro tools get yourself some uh, super helpful beats the heck out of just trying to smash the hell out of that hub you know you miss you hit the backing plate you're trying all different methods it's just the way to go it's the bees knees as they say uh, it's the tuna's fish I just made that up I don't know if anybody says that but they do work well you will use them you'll destroy them if you're working in a shop and use them all the time but if you're at home and you don't have you know you don't want to use the hub buster or any of the other gimmicky stuff out there these work and I mean you've seen it I've used them I've showed them in lots of videos so enough talking comment section the questions the concerns the insty the Facebook and just remember viewers if I can do it you can do it thanks for watching